everybody. Todd Middlehood, Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Apologies for the erratic upload schedule as of late. Things have been pretty hectic on this end lately. We're still recovering from the storm over here, and we didn't even get it as bad as some of these other areas that have been mentioned on the news here. So I think times have been hectic here, but we're just about back on schedule. And with the schedule in mind here, we're going to be talking about the tropics here. We're a little bit behind here, but not by much. Recent five o'clock advisory has come in we do have two named storms out here towards the atlantic we have hurricane kirk here which is a category three right now and is forecast to become a category four by the way this is not a threat to land thankfully this will be heading out to sea along with what is currently right now tropical storm leslie but there are recently new forecast models coming in that are projecting this to make it all the way up to major hurricane as well which interestingly enough will put us right at the forecast quota that we had at the beginning of the year for four to seven major hurricanes this year. So chalk one up for all of those in the uh, weather community, especially those at Colorado State University. They've made a really good forecast in my opinion, but plenty of season left to go. We still have till November 30th to deal with this. And of course, this area has been talk of the town for the last week or so. At one point, this was a lot more threatening. We were looking at potentially up to a 60% chance of development. That has now dropped. It's actually been cut in half. We're now looking at a 30% chance of development. There's going to be a frontal boundary that moves to the southern part of the U.S., and that's going to increase the wind shear over towards this region, add a little bit of dry air in as well. And this is going to make this area a little bit unfavorable for development. Not to say that we can't get something to form here, but the likelihood is dropping off pretty quickly. So it's not the only thing that we have to talk about here. We also have a little bit of activity over here towards the Pacific, towards the southwestern coast of Mexico. We have uh, Tropical Depression 11, which is going onward to land here across southern Mexico. This may sneak its way into the Gulf, but pretty low chance of anything uh, forming as a result of that. And then anything else within the next seven days, pretty low chances of development. This small little area right here, uh, EP 98 here. I wouldn't expect much to come of that or this area right here, which is only at a 30% chance of development. As far as the uh, spaghetti models with these other two storms here, not really much to be concerned with here. Here is a look at Kirk right now. Really impressive buzzsaw on satellite here. Very pronounced eye. Like I said, it's forecasted to make it all the way up to a higher end category four now. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how things develop with that. Any sort of ships that might be in the path of it might need to alter their course for sure. But beyond that, though, like I said, no real impact to land expected, which is great news. But we'll see this thing hang out all the way until middle, the early to middle part of next week. It'll become an extra tropical hurricane at that point. You don't see those pretty often. But um, one thing that might come into play later down the line here is maybe up towards maybe even the UK, this could be an impactful storm. So I'm still interested to see what this could bring well down the line. But as far as US impacts are concerned, nothing to be concerned about. And then also, like I said, taking a look at spaghetti models, as far as threats are concerned, like I said, nothing to be concerned with. None of these are showing a projected category five, which is also great. So Kirk isn't going to be one of those storms that's going to be really strong, but not remembered, hopefully. We'll see what ends up happening with the remnants of it as time goes on. Then, of course, there's Leslie, which is recently formed here. This is expected to become a minimal major hurricane at 115 miles an hour. It's becoming better organized on satellite, as you can see here. I wouldn't be too concerned with this. Like I said, also expect this to head out to sea here. Looking at spaghetti models, pretty good agreement with that as well. This isn't even going to get close to either the greater or lesser Antilles at this point. There are a couple of models that want to push this towards category four or mid-grade category three, but time will only tell whether or not this outcome actually would occur here. But like I said, not much to really be worried about as far as Leslie is concerned. Like I said, we're still interested in what's going on over towards the Gulf or what could be going on here. But like I said, this frontal boundary right here, this little area of low pressure over towards the central U.S. is going to push its way off to the south a little bit. 
it'll be popping in and out of sight on the on the map here but as anything tries to develop over here it's going to be encountering a lot of westerly wind here and as a result it's really going to hamper chances of development in the short term eventually in the long term we do start to see a little bit of a decrease in that wind shear but the pattern itself really doesn't lend itself in the way of tropical development over the gulf here which is great news it's really going to be over towards the main development region where things are a little bit more suitable we can rewind it back and you can see here this is a current analysis time there's actually a little bit of wind shear right now but that's partially due to leslie but as time goes on here wind shear remains pretty light from that point onwards so over the course of the next 16 days, a pretty favorable environment exists here. Good news is, even though the environment here is good for tropical development, it's going to be this little um, high pressure here. And what this is going to end up doing is, as these storms strengthen, those cloud tops get taller with those thunderstorms. It's going to get caught in this little area right here of clockwise rotation and get kicked out to sea long before it gets to land in most cases. If these storms were to stay weaker, they would have a better chance of making it further out to the west before getting pulled outward to sea. Which, Leslie kind of has a better chance of that, but even so, once it gets up to hurricane status and beyond, I wouldn't really be too concerned with it. Another parameter to always look at when we're looking at tropical development, of course, is relative humidity at the mid-levels. And over towards the Gulf, you can see that dry air starting to come in. This map's still kind of loading in as we speak but you can see that little brown area right here sneaking in on the back side of this system and you can see jesus i don't know what's going on with the maps today on tropical tidbits i normally don't have this problem but you can see here on the map a lot of dry air coming in and it holds there too after a while normally we'll see that dry air begin to kind of move out from that point here we'll go back again just try to give the map a little bit more time to work Here's our other two tropical systems, and then of course over towards the main development region. Dry air is also a factor there, but the Gulf is really where the most dry air is going to end up being. And this is kind of coinciding with the weather pattern in general over the U.S. We talked about it in the October outlook, where we're expecting relatively stable conditions, relatively calm weather over a large part of the U.S. here. Maybe towards the northern states was where we might have a little bit more in the way of activity, but October could be a pretty quiet month. Eventually, towards the middle to back part of the month, we might see a little bit of a shift here. As we get towards the end of the month is where my interest kind of peaks a little bit more. And I think we might start to see a little bit more favorability from the Caribbean and the Gulf here. We still have to, of course, watch the Caribbean in particular because the moisture is still there. But um, as far as the Gulf is concerned, it's not quite as favorable as what we had, like, let's say, when Helene was going through. As far as the surface temperatures over the Gulf is concerned, not really much of a surprise to be had there. It's still going to be plenty warm enough for tropical development over over there. And also even just towards the Atlantic as a whole here. Waters are getting a little bit cooler over here towards the main development region. We're not quite in that 30 degrees Celsius range as we were maybe a few weeks ago. But over towards the Gulf and the Caribbean, we're still pretty warm. We still got that bath water in play here. So anything that can get going, if it can overcome that wind shear, could still be a problem. But overall, we are starting to see a little bit of a cool down here too as well, which is, of course, good news. Last thing to look at here are the ensembles here. This is Kirk right here, and this is Leslie. This is our proposed area of development. And as you can see, not really much to talk about there. There's a few, air, a few models that are showing development doesn't really show much of anything maturing into a major storm at this current point in time. There may be a couple of outlier models that do. But even then, compared to what we were seeing last week with this, I'm definitely feeling a little bit better in regards to any sort of tropical threat. And then also the path itself has it more so towards the south and southwestern parts of the peninsula instead of the Big Bend, which took the direct hit from Helene. But in any case, though, we still have to keep an eye on this and we still will we'll have an update or, or full-on tropical outlook on saturday getting a little bit further into the details with that as you can see over towards the main development region even after leslie here it looks like the milton might be forming right behind it milton will be the next named storm here but unless something happens in the gulf quickly i, I think a lot of our activity is going to be mainly over off mainly over towards the uh, west african coast and in the main development region here 
with that being said hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you tomorrow that being said it's been tired metalhead weatherman have an awesome rest of your thursday